Looking uh, over the past couple of years, the big problem in higher ed is cost. And the OPMs, the online program managers, are actually raising the cost of higher ed. It's about 20% more expensive to study online than it is to study on campus. And it's got to be the only industry where tech has disrupted things and made them more expensive. Um, That's completely counterintuitive. It's Why, totally. Would, it's just because you think these middlemen are charging way too high of a price for it? I think so. Like 10 years ago when I started to you, it cost $15 million per program. And it was pretty high risk. You didn't know, could we build an online program that was any good and would anybody take it? Now, it's like two and a half million dollars and 30% of the students getting their masters in the US are getting them online. A whole third, I didn't realize that. Yeah, was it's, it's, people think higher ed never changes. It's actually, you know, kind of moving along. And, uh, and so there's very little risk. There's very little cost, and, and it's well, ridiculous. Why don't the universities push back? What they are mean? starting to push back, but they didn't really have an alternative. And I looked at that and said, there's a market opportunity here, and I can come in as the fast follower. Well, that sounds, that sounds more reasonable. John, I'll tell you why. Because I, I read a, there was a lot of, of uh, sort of rhetoric about how this is now moving to Wall Street, uh, players that are making money here, shareholders are making money here. Companies are trying to make profits. It's not, about the, it's not about the students anymore. And I just think about, is there any industry that we have in this country that isn't well served by having a profit incentive because it, it makes you lean? It, it brings in competition. But it, competition is what he's talking about. You come in as a... Well, uh, why, don't, why, doesn't, why not let that happen? Instead of saying, look, we're, you're making too much money. It shouldn't be about rewarding shareholders. It shouldn't be about a profit incentive. Why not have other OPMs come in that'll do it cheaper and just let the natural forces work instead of suddenly saying that we, we need, a, I don't know, a, a not-for-profit uh, answer to this. Oh my gosh, I'm not a not-for-profit guy. I've been doing for-profit stuff. Well, what, I've created two Why public... isn't there any uh, competition here? I don't, why, why can't that be the answer to this? That'd well, be... first of all, it is. Okay. And we're giving schools uh, an option where they'll save $30,000 per student wow. uh, versus working with a traditional OPM. So I think I, I think, think you should disrupt the the industry you started. That's what I'm that, doing. Yeah. You are. Okay, yeah, good. That's, that's what Noodle is doing. But at the same time, I got to say, you're getting your MBA right. and it's a hundred plus thousand dollars, and thirty thousand of that right. that you're paying to some great university is the profit of the OPM. That might stick in your craw a little bit. Except like, that the, the university is totally willing to do that because they, they, they don't have the time, they don't have the expertise. They didn't have the, the option. That's, but that's where competition comes in. If you can right. be yeah. a cheaper competitor. It cheaper. seems like a lot of the criticism, not, it's not really of the for-profit model, but the company set up to deliver pieces of paper that don't necessarily have great value, right? So you, you kind of ride the for-profit degree-granting gravy train, yep. and what do you have in the end? I mean, and part of that problem seems to be employers who just, you know, say you have to have more and more credentials, whether in fact they're worth anything or not. It's not clear to me employers bought into the notion of the for-profit degrees. No. You know, and, and you say the profit margin's good. In education, it's been a mixed bag. You look at the default rates at the for-profits, and the long-term default rates look like they're over 50%. You know, as that sort of numbers are coming in, being for-profit isn't necessarily being great. And somebody's got to watch this stuff. Education has a problem. It's really hard to measure what's good and what's bad. And people can get away with an awful lot of stuff before you notice. I mean, you don't want, I, I understand. You need some kind of hybrid, I think, because you don't want for profit fire departments. It's like, oh, we can't go to that neighborhood. You know, I mean, that that's obviously doesn't work in certain. Well, especially in the areas. education department, where in the education situation, because yeah, you but, get loans from from the government or from other institutions, but, but if you those loans up, you are paying those subsidies. Yeah. Right? But if you leave the the status quo as is, the way it's run, I mean, there's got to be something better than where there's no accountability really, and and you know they don't even want. Oh, let's not. That's even, right. So the public-private partnership, bringing you know, kind of the, 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 the capital and the innovation of the private sector. Yeah. I, I have 30 investments in education companies. Well, no, no. I'm a big believer You've in made this thousands place. of investments, haven't you, over the years or something? Well, just my personally, yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And, and there's been $20 billion invested in ed tech over the past two decades. It's a, it's a good space. Yeah. But you really do have to pay attention.